Welcome back to another episode of Introductory Organic Chemistry. This is another special episode where we're going to rank the most toxic chemicals. So the rules for this video are that only uh, compounds that are toxic are being considered. We're not doing anything about smell or taste. It's solely just absolute toxicity. And so we're only going to talk about common ones. So here's a list of many toxic reagents that we typically work with as organic chemists. So here we go. Let's get started. Why don't we start with one like isopentyl nitrite? So isopentyl nitrite is a special compound. It's used to make diazonium salts, but it's also used in what's known as poppers. If you don't know why they're called that, I'll let you go and search on your own. It can be quite toxic if inhaled too much. It can cause you to have a heart attack because uh, the blood levels of NO and NO2 compounds can mediate uh, like blood pressure. So this could be a kind of toxic compound if you breathe it in too much. And you might feel your heart race when you're working with it. So I remember we used this in my undergrad lab as well as in my research. And when you're working with it, you can get a slight whiff of like isopentanol, which has a very distinct smell. But this is like slightly different. And then your heart might be beating faster because you're worried about it. And you're not sure if it's like because it's going to kill you or if you're just nervous. And so having anxiety and working with this compound probably isn't the best combination. It's not like immediately going to kill you most of the time, but it could be toxic. So I'm going to put it in B tier and then we'll see what we think later on. Why don't we do one like tributyl tin hydride? So tin compounds in general are quite toxic. They tend to be more of a chronic toxic compound. So if you're working with them a lot, it can you know cause issues later down the line. Um, they smell really bad, and we've had issues with people in our lab contaminating the des um, the lyophilizer with tin compounds, which you should absolutely not do because it contaminates the whole apparatus and other people. So it's not like a great thing to work with. Tin compounds are quite toxic. I'm probably going to put tin in A tier, but you can disagree with me if you just like let me know in the comments. Let's look at another one. How about benzene? So benzene's always talked about as being pretty carcinogenic. I don't personally think it's that bad compared to most of the other things we work with, but it is still technically a carcinogen because it can intercalate the DNA, which just means that it's kind of like a frisbee that like blocks up the DNA from being able to bond properly. I'm going to say benzene is probably F tier or E tier in terms of toxicity, uh, especially when we compare that to some of the other chemicals in this list. Okay, so sodium borohydride. It's a normal reagent. We use it all the time as a reductant. It's a nice, convenient, mild reductant. But it can form borane, which is really toxic uh, if you breathe it in or if you get it on you. And so it's kind of overlooked. So this is worth noting that sodium borohydride can be kind of toxic. I'm going to put it in D tier because while it's toxic, it's fairly stable in water. You just have to be a little bit careful when you're working with it. You might disagree with me, but I think this probably belongs in D tier. Now let's look at another one like DMAP. So DMAP, common catalyst, you can also use it as a stoichiometric base for acylation reactions. Now the issue with DMAP is most people don't know that it's actually pretty toxic. So it can be fatal if you get it on your skin and at very low levels if you read safety data sheets. Now I don't personally know of any instances of someone dying from DMAP exposure, but the hazards given by the chemical companies that sell it make me extremely concerned when working with it. Now that being said, I've worked with more than four grams of DMAP at a time before, and I haven't had any issues, but it is worth knowing that DMAP is potentially dangerous. Hopefully this lecture or this video in general really highlights the importance of looking at the hazards of the chemicals that you're working with before you work with them and just assuming that they're fine. I'm gonna put DMAP in B tier because while it's not that volatile, it could easily be like on the desk and you could get a couple grains of it on your skin and it could cause issues if you get too much of it. So let's look at how about tetrachloromethane, carbon tetrachloride. So carbon tetrachloride can cause significant liver and kidney damage. It can also be toxic to the nervous system. If you get enough of it, it can totally cause your liver and kidney to collapse. But we work with it as a solvent still occasionally. It's also a greenhouse gas and it's also an ozone depleter. So I mean, it's like kind of toxic for the environment, not just yourselves. So I'm going to probably put carbon tet at like B, maybe C. I think I'm going to put it in C for chlorine. Okay, now we have Lawson's reagent. So Lawson's reagent has sulfur in it, so it probably belongs in S tier. Uh, however, it is a solid, so it's not too bad on its own. But if you mix it with water, it can make hydrogen cyanide, and hydrogen cyanide can kill you. 
you could breathe it in and smell it and stop smelling it, and that's because you've exceeded the threshold dose and you could be about to die. Now, while that's concerning, it's pretty okay to work with if you're not being stupid. So I'm going to put it in probably C tier. It might belong in A tier, and it might belong in S tier just because there's sulfur, uh, but we're going to put it in B tier. Let's talk about hydrazine. So hydrazine is toxic in just a lot of different ways. It can create a lot of issues with a lot of different parts of your body. There could be chronic and acute toxicity, and it smells really awful if you ever smell hydrazine. It's not a good compound, and I'd not encourage you to smell it at all. Usually when you work with it, it's as a solution, and it's better to work with it that way because you're less likely to get an insanely toxic amount on you. I'm going to put hydrazine in S tier. It's also like extremely flammable and it's used as like a uh, fuel for rockets. So hydrazine's kind of terrifying. Also bad for the environment. It can also cause um, like allergic sensitivity to other hyd hydrazine type compounds. So it's just a bad compound. Hydrazine belongs in S tier. Now potassium cyanide, cyanide could go S tier right away. The reason cyanide's toxic is while it's also corrosive, it can shut down cytochrome uh, C oxidase, which is in the mitochondria, which essentially stops your cells from being able to use oxygen. And so essentially you suffocate even though there's oxygen present. I like to think about the mitochondria as like the stock exchange of the cells because they're just converting, you know, everything into the US dollar, everything into ATP. And as soon as you shut down the markets, it's like everything goes to hell. So cyanide's a pretty bad one. There's the reason it's in S tier. Now, let's look at diacetyl. So diacetyl is a nice smelling compound, but only in very small amounts. Diacetyl is the typical microwave popcorn flavor. There's small amounts of it in butter, along with like alpha hydroxybutanone, um, or 3-hydroxybutanone if you prefer. But the issue with diacetyl is if you breathe in large amounts of it, you can end up getting what's called popcorn lung, where your lungs get covered in this thick coating of mucus that's from breathing in too much of it. And so this used to just be an issue in people working with like artificial butter flavors. But recently, there's been a lot of like buttery flavors of vapes that people have used in vape pens. And so people have ended up damaging their lungs from breathing in too much of this. So it is like it's an okay smell in small amounts. I actually personally hate the smell of diacetyl or butane dione because I worked with it as a photosensitizer, which is another reason you might be working with it in the lab. And one drop of it in a pipette anywhere in the lab makes the whole lab reek of microwave popcorn. So it's not that toxic, but because people are breathing it in, I'm going to put it in A tier. Let's look at this one. So this is meth methyl acrylate. Methyl acrylate instantly just makes me think of the dentist because while I've worked with this in the lab, and some of my lab mates have worked with it as well, it has a very distinct smell. Acrylates have a very distinct smell. And when you're in the dentist's office getting a filling, what they'll usually do is they'll use a pre-polymer, which is like a low molecular weight acrylate, uh, polyacrylate, that's able to like continue polymerizing when they shine UV light on it. But when they've added pre-polymer into like my teeth before, I can 100% smell methyl acrylate. So I know that they do not have like a very high quality product. And the dentist just asks, oh, are you fine? It's like, no, I'm not fine. I can tell there's methyl acrylate vapor in my mouth and there should not be methyl acrylate vapor in my mouth. So it's kind of toxic. It depletes your glutathione, which is like what your liver makes as a silver bullet to just react with uh, like stuff that can react basically like Michael acceptor wise. So I'm going to put methyl acrylate probably in C tier because we don't work with it that much. It's not that toxic, but it's awful. It smells awful. Now, a similar one that is way worse is acrolein. So this is an aldehyde as well. This is like the smell of burning fat. Um, and it is like a choking, suffocating odor. And it's like super toxic. So acrolein is going to be A tier. Actually, it's probably going to be S tier very toxic compound to work with, even though it's a really useful building block because it's both a Michael acceptor and an aldehyde. So you can like add nucleophiles into the beta position, alpha positions active, but it's like a pretty toxic compound and most supervisors don't want you working with that. Sodium azide, basically the same as sodium cyanide, except it's also explosive. If you put it down the drain and you have any lead pipes, it'll make lead azide, which can just explode. This is a terrible compound, super toxic and toxic for the environment. It's just gonna go right into S tier. So AIBN, AIBN is used as a radical initiator. When you heat this up or shine light at it, it makes two carbon centered radicals. AIBN on its own is somewhat toxic, but if those two tertiary radicals uh, like collapse, so like if you just react AIBN on its own, the compound that it makes is highly toxic, 
uh, and you do not want to get it on you or near you at all. Super, super toxic compound. AIBN is going to go in A tier. Carbon disulfide, similar to carbon tetrachloride, is just toxic in general. It can cause acute and chronic issues to the nervous system, but it can also cause like psychosis, which is kind of insane. And if you want to read about the Wikipedia article on carbon disulfide and psychosis, it's got some pretty terrifying symptoms. It also smells pretty bad and it smells like it makes you nauseous when you smell it or nauseated. So I'm going to put carbon disulfide in, I think, B tier. Maybe it belongs in A tier. I'm going to put it in A tier. Uh, dichloroethane. So dichloroethane is really toxic for the skin. Um, I'm always just more concerned about dichloroethane because I work with sulfur so much and dichloroethane could very easily react with a nucleophilic sulfur source and make nerve gas because if you look up, or a mustard gas, if you look up mustard gases structurally, you'll know exactly why I'm saying that. Um, so dichloroethane is a little bit terrifying to me, uh, but it's also not great to get on your skin. It's probably, you know, around as bad as sodium borohydride, but because we don't have anything in E tier, actually, you know what, I'm going to move sodium borohydride to E tier, and I'm going to keep dichloroethane in D tier. And I might actually move carbon tetrachloride down to D tier as well. Okay. Pyridine. Pyridine smells bad. I've heard it's bad for males, but I haven't ever seen that in an SDS. It is generally toxic, and like I hate the smell of pyridine. Like if you have a if you have like um, a reagent box with a bottle of pyridine in it, the whole thing smells like pyridine. I absolutely hate the smell of it. Now it's not that toxic. It probably belongs in C tier. Okay, DCC. DCC is a white solid. It uh, reacts with water to make dicyclohexyl urea, which is a potent allergen and an allergen sensitizer. And so if you get this on you, the more you work with it, the more allergic you are to uh, urea type compounds. Um, people aren't usually aware that it could be a potent allergen. Um, similar things that are used as like coupling reagents, such as like Pybop or Hatu also have similar like allergen properties. I'm going to put DCC in C because it has so many C's in its name. Okay, HMPA. HMPA is toxic. It's known to be carcinogenic in rats, and it's often discussed as like a super duper toxic solvent, but it, I don't think it's that toxic, but it is carcinogenic still. Um, so I'm going to put it in D tier. Most people will probably disagree with me here, but I looked into it, and it doesn't look like it's that toxic compared to most of the other really terrible things that we're talking about. Like I've worked with carbon disulfide as a solvent and as like a reagent, like probably over 30 times. Um, and I'm putting that in A tier, whereas HMPA I've only worked with a couple times. Okay, we have three left. We have dimethyl sulfate, thionyl chloride, and dimethyl sulfide. Dimethyl sulfide isn't that toxic on its own. It's kind of like the smell of rotting cabbage. It's like toxic. You can get to lethal levels if it's in the air, but you cannot handle that level in the air because you could smell this at parts per billion and it stinks. Like it stinks bad. So if you do a Swern oxidation in an earlier video, which I could link to here, dimethyl sulfide is produced uh, via the Swern oxidation. And so when people tend to do Swern oxidations, if you're in a big, big enough lab, you'll have a separate fume hood for doing Swern oxidations because no one else wants to be near the dimethyl sulfide and it'll probably even have its own rotavap. I'm going to put dimethyl sulfide in C tier. Now, thionyl chloride reeks. We have had... At uh, one point in time where we were putting our chemical waste into a steel drum because we were running out of those four liter glass bottles that we would normally use for halogenated and non-halogenated organic waste. But someone decided that thionyl chloride was an organic waste. Now, tell me where the carbon is in thionyl chloride. I'll give you a minute. Yeah, that's right. There's no carbon. So this shouldn't have gone in the organic waste. It should have just been quenched. And so because we were using a big steel drum at this time, we had um, a political representative coming and visiting our lab that morning. And what had happened was someone put a ton of this and glacial acetic acid into this big steel drum, and it just dissolved a hole through the bottom, and the floor of our lab was permanently stained. And the whole lab reeked, and I got stuck with the duty to clean it up. Thionyl chloride is super toxic. It's super reactive. I'm going to put it in A tier. Now last, but certainly not least, dimethyl sulfate. Dimethyl sulfate is potent as a carcinogenic reagent. It uh, will cause cancer basically wherever you get it. Maybe like maybe I'm exaggerating slightly here, but it can pass through the cell membrane 
and like it is used to induce cancer in like biology it's not a good reagent to work with it was used as a chemical warfare agent historically in the world wars and it can also cause acute pneumonia and if you breathe in enough of this you will get fatal pneumonia this is definitely s tier and of all the reagents here, dimethyl sulfate is definitely the scariest one to work with. I mean, they're like cyanide scary to work with too. Hydrazine scary to work with. Azide is scary to work with. But dimethyl sulfide is like a little bit terrifying. Uh, a lab mate of mine once said that, oh, that one's fine. I, I've handled it without gloves before. And I'm like, are you insane? And so uh, hopefully the takeaway from this is you should always look at the hazards associated with your reagents when you're creating a table of products and reagents for your lab notebook. And if not, just be careful what you mix because you never know what could happen. You could make some really sketchy compounds. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and hopefully it was educational and entertaining. And uh, it would really help this channel if you left a like and subscribed. Have a great day.